good morning children in the earlier class we have discussed the all the sectors how they contributed to the gdp and which type of pattern is followed in the developed countries whether that type of pattern is followed in india or not of course we came to one conclusion that the pattern in the share of sectors to the gdp is followed in india but the shift in the employment is not to place in india so what are the problems behind that to understand clearly that we have to again on the basis of nature of work nature of employment we have to classify the workers as the organized sector and unorganized sector to understand clearly in our textbook they have given you two examples of narasimha and rajeshwari narasimha is working in a government office and generally it is very near to him just 5 km away from his home and daily he works from the 9:30 to 5:30 and also he has so many facilities and on sundays also he gets the salary and if any time he is required any medical facilities also are provided by the government and paid leave is also there on sundays and other things and when he retires there are some benefits of pension and other things also so provident fund and other facilities also there the working conditions are good when we take the rajeshwari story she is a construction worker and generally she goes to the work from the 7 am to 7 am and he returns to home at 7 pm and overall she gets 10 or 12 days per month work she doesn't get full month and also when she is sick she will not be paid and she is working at the low wage and also she working under the mission by to 10 members labors are worked under the one mission and regularly she gets 150 rupees per day and she is paid in the evening or sometimes after 3 4 days or, or after the completion of that work if she works at the same place and if there is any accidents takes place only according to the government rules aish she is being a member of self help group the government will provide some compensation but not fully paid 92% of the workers in india are engaged in unorganized sector only 8% workers are engaged in organized sector so what is the difference between the organized and unorganized sector first we have to know what is organized sector the organized sector covers the enterprises or the working places where the employment pattern is regular and generally they are registered by the government there are some rules and regulations they have to be followed and there are some acts like factory act minimum wages act shops and establishment tax are enforced by the government in this sector easily and especially the working hours are systematic and the job security is more and if you work more the overtime will be paid and they will provide the 
provident fund to the employees and when you are sick they will provide the medical facilities or medical expenses also to the employees here and there is a systematic formal procedure is here the paid leave is provided to the employees in organized sector and also there are good working conditions also provided just like drinking water facility sanitation facility uh, and other facilities also an organized sector is characterized by small and scattered units generally which are remained largely outside of the government control of course there are rules and regulations also there but they are not enforced in these sectors here employment to security is not there there is no employment security this is the main problem in this sector and low paid low paid employment is there and there is no overtime payment there are no good working conditions sometimes the workers are asked to leave without any reason and in some unseasons also they are asked to leave the job and there are no provisions for the paid leave or sick leave or other things here the unorganized sectors also includes the self employed here the people who are employed on their own are called self employed just like the shopkeepers street vendors and welders plumbers electricians painters or other drivers etc and these are all need protection and they are required the regular work and some provisions from the government in the rural areas in an organized sector the small and marginal farmers and landless laborers and artisans like blacksmith goldsmith carpenter weavers etc nearly 80% of the households in rural area are covered under the small and marginal farmers they need seeds fertilizers and credit and market facilities like that the government should provide the that facilities to them when we see the unorganized sector in urban area it is comprised of small scale industries and casual laborers in construction work trade and other activities like the street vendors shopkeepers and drivers and some of the self employed workers are here generally the small scale industry and the trade these are required for the raw material and after that they required the market outlets to sell their products most of the workers in an organized sector are coming from the backward communities they are facing they are discriminated not only financially in socially also they are discriminated let's examine the organized and unorganized sectors how they are contributing the gdp there is a table given here it is showing the details of contribution of organized and unorganized sectors in 2005 let us see in organized sector only 8% of workers are engaged but they are contributing to the gdp 50% in unorganized sector 
92% of the workers are engaged but they are also contributing the 50% to the gdp you can see the difference between the organized and unorganized sector how to create more and better conditions of employment for example we take the gayatri example she is required the seeds fertilizers and credit and market facilities and other things especially water if the government provide if the government invest some money that type of on the type of farmers or the banks give the credit to the type of farmers they will construct a well and then their production is increased and the remaining disguised employees in that family also work in their own field for the second crop to get more working days and if the government provides the roads then automatically the transport system is increased as the productive the as the produced goods will be transported as well as the agriculture the trade and the transport also increased and gayatri is not only willing water the main problem is generally in villages like gayatri so many small farmers are taking the loans from the money lenders at the highest interest rate if the government will provide the credit at the lowest interest mm. rates they get the credit and they invest in the agriculture and they produce more goods and it will be helpful to the gdp to create better conditions of employment we have to concentrate on semi rural areas here we have to identify promote and locate industries and service sectors in these areas there is an example suppose some farmers are decided to grow only cereals we have to establish a flour mill in that area it will helps to sell their flour to the cities and in some instances especially in forest areas we have to establish honey collecting centers also by collecting honey from the nearest forest and we can sell in the other markets next thing if we establish a cold storage in these areas it is very helpful to them we can preserve the chili sanian sar other types of vegetables or fruits in that cold is cold storages and we they get the reasonable rate for their products in the future there is another option we have to set up processing units also it is helped in the vegetables and fruits and other things there is not only the need of increase the employment opportunities we have to train them work efficiently in the future the government is also conducting so many training programs to the workers if the government should invest in rural and semi rural areas the goods and services will be produced more and these areas and these unorganized sectors also contribute to the gdp efficiently in the future